uh, let's do the painting, religious painting, early Christian painting, and Islamic painting. Okay. All right, we've got the churches and what, they, what the design does. Then we have some of the sculpture, then some of the painting. Painting will become much more famous in the Renaissance, but let's start uh, with the early Christian painting. Okay, uh, with the early Christian, it's ethical monotheism, and most people cannot read, but they can look at pictures. So a lot of the art will basically be telling a story. Um, all right, so there's Michelangelo uh, the, and the Last Supper. Um, some of the main core ideas are that that's Jesus of the Last Supper, and the year is around zero. Um, crucified in about 33 AD. And then these are some of your images here, the Eisenheim altarpiece and his resurrection. And there's two Bibles. There's the Old Testament, which is the Hebrew Bible, and the New Testament, which is the Christian Bible. And these are the stories that are going to be in most of the art we'll see. All right. There's the Roman Empire. During the Roman Empire, it becomes Christian. And your first image is from about 200. It's an early Christian image. It's the catacomb, and it's famous for the paintings. There are three paintings, but the really famous one is the Good Shepherd. That is Jesus, but he looks like a shepherd. You want to be aware of the iconography of Jesus. He looks different at different times. At this time, he looks like a shepherd, and that's the, uh, because it's during a classical time of Rome. All right, now we'll jump to the Byzantine, about the 500s, and Rome will fall, Byzantine will go forward. There are some illuminated manuscripts. Illuminated manuscripts are Bible books with pictures. So here is the Bible, and here is the picture. I've never seen this one before. Uh, just be aware of it. This is a Byzantine manuscript. And the function would be, it would be, this paint picture would tell you the story of Jacob wrestling an angel. Uh, it talks about it's medieval on the one hand, but has some classical elements. It has some goddesses and some classical elements. All right, the next one, this is the uh, Virgin Theocotus. This is a Byzantine icon. The function, this is for worshiping. This would have almost magical powers. The style, it's not natural. It's flat. It's stylized, and this would have great power. And, and that's uh, Mount Sinai. That's where they made it. And in fact, it spooked people because they thought it was a false uh, image. And one of the Ten Commandments is, do not have a false image. That led to iconoclasm, the breaking of the images. But that is a Byzantine icon. That's Mary. That's Jesus. That's the halo. Very flat. Okay. All right. Uh, then we'll go to medieval. What happens in Europe is it's chaos. Thugs just break everything. We don't have a lot of art. The only art we have is Hiberno-Saxon, which would be from Irish monks. So you have the Lindisfarne Gospels, and you have the carpet page, and here it is. This would be a cover page. So this, on the one hand, you have a cross, which is recognizable. On the other hand, you have abstracted Viking art. It's an illuminated manuscript. It's a design to go on top of a Bible. This is the Linda's Far Gospel cover page, the cross carpet page. And it's got great details, interlacing. Then it's got the St. Luke portrait page. That's Luke, that's a portrait, and then his book would follow. And then you have the insipid page. So there's three images there. These are all for monks. The function would be to decorate the beauty of the word of the Bible with the beauty of an image. Uh, then there's Romanesque about 1,000. If you notice, there's not a lot of art during that time because everything is destroyed. Uh, then in um, 1,000, you have churches, but you also have the Bayou Tapestry, and this is a carpet that tells the story of the Normans attacking England. That's the Bayou Tapestry. That's the cavalry attack. That's the first meal. It's like Saving Private Ryan of the year 1,000. It's a heroic invasion of the Normans attacking the British. Okay, then we go to Gothic. There's a couple of Gothic images here. That's a dedication page, and that's the Apocalypse page. So this is a page that is um, dedicating a book, and this is a page talking about the Apocalypse, and these are illuminated manuscripts. And that's close-ups of those two. And then the style here, if you notice, this is Gothic style. It's flat. It's stylized. It is not naturalistic. 
The function is religious. The function is to tell the story of, of the manuscript. All right, then we have the golden haagen dot. This is, um, it's got several images. It's got the plague of Egypt, scene of liberation, and the Passover. It's got four images here. By the way, of interest, plague. We're going through a plague right now. This is the plague of Egypt, where the plague went over and, and spared the Hebrews. And then it has Passover, and that celebrates the passing over of the plague. And this is the golden haagen dot. It's a, a Jewish book that would tell stories of the Jewish people. And this is an illuminated manuscript telling those stories of the Golden Haggadah. All right, this is, now we'll go to Gothic. And this is stained glass from Chartres Cathedral, Notre Dame. That's Mary, Jesus, stained glass. And the Gothic churches have the flying buttress. They have the big windows that allows them to put art in the form of stained glass. And this is Chartres Cathedral, and this is the elevation of Mary. The earlier churches are of Jesus. This one's of Mary. And it's Mary like a mom with her baby. It's a very loving, kind icon, as opposed to the Last Judgment that's scary, or the Rotkin Pieta, which is equally scary. And that's Notre Dame. Okay, that's uh, Touchdown Jesus at Notre Dame Stadium, which is kind of funny. All right, now to the mosque. Uh, we did this one before, this great mosque, Cordoba. So they're, uh, oh, for the mosque. If you notice here, non represent, it's abstract art. You won't see, it's not illegal, but you won't see naturalistic images at Cordoba. It's abstracted, it's beautiful, and in a, a non nat it, God is above nature, so the art is above nature. It's not naturalistic. You won't see any naturalistic pictures. It is arabesque, calligraphic, non-representational. Okay, now we'll go to Florence in the 1300s. We have Giotto, and this is the big one here, Giotto's Lamentation. And he is not Renaissance. He's proto-Renaissance. He's so good, he gets his own category. And it's Giotto, and he has a sense of naturalism, much more naturalism. Uh, this would be in the, um, in, in the, in the church there. And if you just look, see how flat Byzantine icon is? Giotto has more depth. Gothic art is flat, two-dimensional, artificial, more depth here. Uh, Gothic art is very stylized. It's not real, more naturalistic here. And so he has some depth. So Giotto has some depth. If you just look at it, you can see it. And it, his figures have real weight. And he uses chiaroscuro or dark light or modeling. And, but the main thing is he has real pathos, real emotion. For the first time, it looks like a stage. Giotto has emotion and some sense of naturalism. When you get to the Northern Renaissance, now we'll go to the Northern Renaissance, oil painting will come in. And then there's Gothic. Uh, you can see some kind of Gothic influence here with the Northern Renaissance, but a great deal, a big change here. The main thing on Northern Renaissance is, is it is religious. It has hidden symbols like the fruit, green, um, the shoes are off, the light. And uh, it's got hidden symbols. And here's one, the Marod altarpiece. OK, this is a private altarpiece. Its function would be in the home, and it'd be devotional. And the person would pray to it. And this would be uh, Mary. There's an angel. And it's got all kinds of symbols, the white, the flowers, the vessel. Um, and if you look here, the spirit comes in through here. Nobody's aware of it. The spirit comes in here. This is the Marod altarpiece, and that's what it would look like. And there's Gabriel, the angel, and there's Mary, and then the candle has gone out, and then basically the candle's been blown out by the spirit, and that's the spirit coming in through the window, and she is the vessel. Okay. Then we go to the early Renaissance, in the early Renaissance, a lot of changes are going to come in. And uh, I think we'll do early Renaissance later. That's a good stopping point. 